an extract. You might remember this. We talked about the rental, um, the equipment rental request. We've talked about this for, for the last um, uh, few weeks. This is an example where you've got a, um, we've got an engineering company, you've got a uh, head office, you've got um, uh, a works engineer on site somewhere. He wants a piece of equipment. He rings up and orders a piece of equipment uh, through head office. Somebody looks it up. They, uh, they try and find the right piece of equipment. They try and uh, get it. If it's not ready, if it's not available, they try and find something else. And then it goes back down to the works engineer who either accepts it or rejects it. Remember that process. Okay, well, let's look at all these steps here. What's valuating and what's not valuating? Let me um, stop sharing the screen at the moment. Okay, let me look at uh, who I have as participants. Does anybody, uh, I've got my participant list up over here and let me bring up my chat box on the side. Chat box on one side. Uh, let me now go back to sharing my screen. Right, can everybody see that again? See that um, uh, that BPMN diagram? Can anyone tell me, what about submit a rental request? Valuating, non-valuating, business valuating? Anyone want to put anything in the chat box? What about Divya? Divya, are you awake? Yes. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'm picking on you. I'm not really picking on you. I just, I just chose a name at random. Is um, what would you say? Submit rental equipment. Uh, submit equipment rental request. Valuating, business valuating, or non-valuating. So, teacher, you with us? Yes, sir. This is me. Okay. What, uh, what do you think? Is it, uh, is it valuating, non-valuating, business valuating? Like submit equipment, uh, equipment rental request means yeah. what you are going to need for to start the new business. That's or, step. Do you, think that, do you think it's valuating, business valuating or non-valuating? Evaluating, sir. Yes, I think you're right too. All right, well done. At least, at least you're awake. I'll mute you back again. All right, so fill in the request and send the... Okay, so filling in the request itself, you're right. So the task is actually valuating. So filling in that request is valuating, but then the act of actually sending it to the clerk down here. So this, this task here is non-valuating. So we certainly need to fill in the, the equipment request. Now, obviously the clerk needs to be able to get it somehow, uh, but that actual um, step there, sending it down there is non-valuating. So, um, so Tiju is quite right. It is a valuating task. Opening and reading the request is non-valuating. So the clerk, um, now having a clerk to open and read it is non-valuating and selecting suitable equipment. Selecting suitable equipment is valuating the first time it's done. Maybe not the second time if it's not available or the third time, but certainly the first time. Checking the equipment availability, this step over here, checking that equipment avail availability is valuating the first time. Recording um, uh, recommended equipment is business valuating. And then forwarding the request, actually forwarding the request to a works engineer is non-valuating. Opening and examining the request from the works engineer is business valuating. Communicating any issues. So if there's uh, any issues, if it's rejected or whatever, is um, business valuating. And forwarding the request back to the clerk uh, back here is non-valuating. So these, these steps where you're passing something on uh, tend to be non-valuating. Can we eliminate these steps? Well, maybe not entirely, but there's certainly things we can undertake to speed these things up. And this is what, uh, this, is what this sort of qualitative analysis is all about. Uh, producing a purchase order is business valuating. Submitting a purchase order to a supplier is valuating. And just a, a quick analysis. Here's, these are the steps to fill the request, send the request all the way down to producing a purchase order. It tells us who performs them whether they're evaluating, non-valuating, uh, valuating, business valuating, non-valuating, and so on. Well, one of the things you just might want to notice is if you start to look down at the non-valuating steps and see who performs them. So we've got a clerk performing a non-valuating step there, clerk performing that. Uh, we have a works engineer performing non-valuating step and a work um, engineer performing another one. 
Now, if you see, now in this case, it, this fairly evenly spread. So there's steps there we might want to try and eliminate or um, reduce the load. But if you happen to see a particular performer and they're performing a lot of non-valuating steps, and that might give us some indication. Let's say, for instance, we had a clerk and let's just say this was not the example we had. Let's say we had a couple more non-valuating steps here and we had a clerk that would perform a lot of non-valuating steps. Then you might think, well, maybe we can eliminate this position altogether if we can find a way to remove the clerk out of the steps. That's not the case here because uh, the clerk and the site engineer um, and the works en engineer all have a non-valuating step. But if you saw that in some sort of other analysis, and it might be an indication we don't need a particular um, role. The Victorian Institute of Technology has other great videos covering many different topics. Please check them out and thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe the video for more great content like this.